The Tiger Rising by Kate D. Camillo. Chapter 23. The next morning, Rob put the keys to the tiger cage in one pocket and the wooden bird in the other and set out looking for Willie May. He found her in the laundry room, sitting on one of the fold-up chairs, smoking a cigarette and staring into space. Hey there, she said to him. Where's your lady friend at? School, said Rob, but today's only a half day. He kept his hands in his pockets. Now that he stood before Willie May, he was afraid to give her the bird. What if it was wrong? What if he had carved it wrong and it didn't look anything like the real cricket? What you give me them shifty eyed looks for? Willie May asked. I made you something, said Rob quickly before he lost his nerve. Made me something, said Willie May. For real? Uh huh. Close your eyes and hold out your hand. I ain't, said Willie May. But she smiled and closed her eyes and put out her enormous hand, palm up. Rob carefully placed the bird in it. You can look now, he told her. She closed her fingers around the little piece of wood, but she didn't open her eyes. She puffed on her cigarette, the long gray ash on the end of it trembled. Don't need to look, she finally said. The cigarette ash dropped to the floor. I know what I got in my hand. It's cricket. But you got to look at it and tell me, did I do it right, said Rob. I ain't got to do nothing, said Willie May, except stay black and die. She opened her eyes slowly, as if she was afraid she might frighten the bird into flying away. Just the right bird, she said, nodding her head. Just the one. Now you don't got to dream about him no more, said Rob. That's right, said Willie May. Where'd you learn to work a piece of wood like this? My mama, said Rob. Willie May nodded. She taught you good. Yes, ma'am, said Rob. He stared down at his legs. I know a wooden bird ain't the same as having a real one. It ain't, agreed Willie May. But it soothes my heart just the same. My dad said he ain't got no job for me until this afternoon. He said I could help you out this morning. Well, said Willie May. She dropped the bird into the front pocket of her dress. I might could find some way for you to help me. So Rob spent his morning following Willie May from room to room, stripping the dirty sheets from, his bed, from the beds. And while he worked, the keys jingled in his pocket and he knew that soon Sistine would be out of school and that she would demand again that he unlock the cage and let the tiger go. Time out. What a beautiful little moment that Kate D. Camillo gives Rob and Willie May at this point. So I'm gonna stop here and ask, why is Willie May in this book? What does Kate, now remember, no character is in a book by accident. Writers have their reasons for putting characters in there. And so we see Willie May here. What purpose does she serve? And she doesn't know anything about the tiger. Um, she uh, isn't going out to like go rescue the tiger in any way. She doesn't seem to talk to uh, Rob's dad. So it's not like they, they have some sort of relationship. She doesn't do anything about school. She's just working and hanging out, talking to Rob. And yet we have an entire chapter devoted to Rob talking to Willie May. So it's a good question to ask. Why is Willie May in this book at all? Well, characters are in books because the author feels that they serve a purpose. And sometimes those characters serve a purpose for the main character and they serve the main character in some way even though they might not be part of the full plot we know that rob's plot involves something about the tiger but willie may serves some other purpose for rob and she 
fills a need that he has. So what do you think that need is? It's a good thing for you to think about and write about in your reading response journal.